So here are my carburetors for the Ninja 500 and um, I'm going to be splitting this up into like a three part video or three videos of me rebuilding these carbs. These carbs are missing a lot of pieces and this is probably the, this is 100% this is the main reason why my EX500 isn't running properly. Um, well they're not on the bike so it won't run at all. So today we're going to be focusing on the bottom end of these areas right here on both sides. And I'm going to have two videos on fixing these parts underneath and then one video fixing the top ends. So. Uh, here I have laid out all the pieces that I bought for the rebuild currently. I have more on the way, but these are what I have so far. I bought this, they came in this, this is an all balls carburetor rebuild kit and this is what it includes. I've labeled them all to what I think they are. I'm not an expert, but this is just what I think each piece is. You see right here I have these numbered according to the book I have here. I've got the repair manual here and this is what I'm going to be following to rebuild these carbs. And this is a very nice diagram that shows all the pieces and what they should be. Okay, so starting from this top corner we have these gaskets in the book they're called o-rings we have what I think are the needle jets pilot jet these really tiny things are main jets these are pilot screws I thought they were for the choke at first but looking carefully I think they're pilot screws these are screws for the top that we're not going to be touching today these are screws for the bottom which we're going to use these are some o-rings that I don't know what are for yet, but I th we'll figure it out later. These are some springs that go with the pilot screws, I think. These o-rings and washers also go with the pilot screw, I think. And over here, these are fuel inlet valve needles. These, these help, these help, they do something for the float. Yeah, these are attached to the float, I think, and they let, they decide how much fuel gets gets into the carburetor, something like that. I am an expert again. I'm just trying this on my own. Um, if you're an expert, leave a comment if I'm doing this right or not. <laughs> Let's get into it. I've also got a flashlight here. It's a flashlight and an like, electricity reader, but we're just gonna use the flashlight feature tiny screwdriver and this screwdriver which is actually just a needle which might come in handy so let's start on the bottom we're going to be starting one at a time for each of these now my carburetors I've already looked at them and they're missing a lot of pieces. Basically everything on the inside, they're just missing them. And look, there should be four screws at each corner. Mine only has two each. So, good thing I have new ones. This is going to be kind of like a like step-by-step -step how to. Because I don't I haven't is like there's none on the internet of people rebuilding EX500 or Ninja 500 carbs. There's some videos of Ninja 250s which are much more common. I've noticed, but not many of Ninja 500s. So there we go. This is the bottom bowl. There, here's the gasket. This one. You might think it's not okay. Look right here. It's been pinched right here and now it won't seat properly in its spot. So we're going to change that. I've also got a can of carb cleaner right here. Only a few bucks. And I, what I've seen on the internet, you should spray this on everything. Spray this into every hole usually to clean out any old gunk. 
Uh, this bike hasn't been started for I think a year is what I was told. So it might have some old gas in here. It looks fairly clean. There is a drain at the bottom which I'll probably spray some some of the carb cleaner into, but we'll do that later. Now look in here, we've got a few holes. This is where I get really lost, this is where the book really comes in handy. So here are the floats, and they seem to be working. They're supposed to bounce back, and they do. Now there's three holes that are important, I think. This one, this one, and one over here. This one is for the pilot screw. Yeah, the pilot screw and the, the little washers. This one is for, I don't know, let me see. We're figuring this out at the same time, okay? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so the larger one is for the main jet. And I don't have the main jet, unfortunately. So that's going to be in the part two where I f f deal with this part. So I've got the pilot jet and the thing that goes in here, which is... The pilot screw. The pilot screw goes in this hole. Pilot jet goes in that one. So I have these two, but not the big one. So I'm going to start with spraying this bowl with uh, the carb cleaner and just leaving it aside. So there on the bottom there's a small drain here. Maybe I should open that, I don't know. Should I open it? I'm gonna open it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with spraying some carb cleaner into this hole and this hole, because those are the, what we're gonna be filling up today with new parts. And then we're gonna try replacing the little needle underneath the float. Um, this hole right here kind of confused me. I thought it was for something. Let me, let me zoom in on that. Yeah, this one right here, I thought it was for something, but looking at it with a flashlight, it doesn't go anywhere and there's no threads. So that is just going to be like that, just empty. So let's spray some carb cleaner into here. Hopefully, oh shit, it's, it, it gets everywhere, damn. Some in here. Okay, I'm just gonna let that be now. And uh, let's try taking off this thing. So it says there's a clip that needs to be removed so that the float can come off. Hmm. It's kind of hard seeing where. Okay. So there's a clip under here. Again, I should zoom in. There's a clip right here. It's not a clip, but it's like, just, it's supposed to poke it out. Yeah, just like that. You see, I pushed it. Now let me get some pliers and pull this out really slowly. There we go. Don't want to lose this. Let me zoom in on the camera. Focus, focus, focus. It's not gonna focus. Okay, but it's just like a little rod. Leave this aside very carefully. Pick up the float. All right, there we go, guys. The float's on, oh shit, okay. So this is the old needle, one of them. Again, camera doesn't wanna focus. Come on.
Man, this is having a really hard time focusing. You can get an idea. There we go. Got it. So this is the fuel inlet valve needle. That's what it's called. And it's it looked like it just hooked on to right here on the back of the flow. Right here on the back, there's a little metal thing that looked like it was hanging on. So let's take out a new one. So this is the new piece. It looks identical. Um, you don't necessarily have to change these all the time, but I have new pieces, so I'm just going to use all my new pieces. Um, if you can tell if you need to replace it by looking at the tip very carefully, if it's like starting to not look like a perfect triangle, like the black part, then uh, you should probably change it. Sometimes they get a wear, wear away right at the middle of them. So let's put it back onto the float. Here's the float. And on the back of these, you see they've got a little metal kind of hoop. And these are going to slide on. There we go, come on. Like, like that. See? So I know it won't focus, but just stay with me, guys. And you can see there's a little... You can see. We'll focus. On the needle, there is a little thing that sticks out, and it lines up perfectly with like a, a little divot on the flow. So that's where it should be. It's very hard. It keeps falling off. So very carefully, we're going to put this back on. My head out of the way. And we'll put this piece back in. This is what holds up the flow. Focus. Okay. And it just slides in the side like that. goes through the float and out the other side. There we go, got it to line up. Okay, now that we're done installing that new needle, let's move on to, uh, I'd say let's move on to the pilot screw. It seems to be simple enough. Um, we've let the carb cleaner soak in there for a while. I don't know if it's supposed to come out again. Let me, I'm going to hang it over my bucket. No, it, no, I think it evaporates. So these are, it's in. I think it's working. I think I did that right. Uh, I guess we'll have to see when I start the bike eventually. So, for the pilot screw, it goes into this hole right here. See a needle pointing at it. This is what the thing looks like. So before this goes in, you gotta put it right here. Let me stop the video right here. Now, in this hole, we're putting in four components. The O-ring, the washer, the spring that goes around, and the pilot screw. The way that I did this at first was I started putting in the O-ring and the washer into the hole, 
and I found it to be kind of difficult to get them in there to line up right. So what I did later on the second car was I put them on onto the pilot screw first. It stayed onto that, and then I put the complete uh, assembly of that into the carburetor, and it was a lot easier. Uh, in this first clip, I'm going to show you how I did it at first, which I don't recommend, and then after that I'm going to show the way that was a lot easier. So don't do it the, f the way I did it in the first clip. A washer and a nut. Or not a nut, a washer and a an O-ring, my bad. Um, and also, one of these springs. Oh shit, I dropped it. Goodness, one of these springs right here. Okay. So, So the O-ring is going to go first, and then we're going to put in the washer. So let's get this bag open. These parts are very small, so you should have a clean workspace so that you don't lose these. Okay, I'm going to put in the O-ring. There we go. Very carefully, I have it on my little needle here, and we're gonna put it very carefully in here. And I have my fascia, I'm gonna make sure that it's in there right. Make sure it's down. Hopefully, my head's not in the camera. Looks like it's it's gone down flat. So we'll move on to the washer. Here's the washer, very tiny piece. You can't even see it. I'm gonna put this in carefully. It's sticking to the, the needle. Okay, it seems to be sticking to the needle, so that's not going to work. So I think you get the idea of what I was trying to do here, and it just wasn't working, so now I'm going to show you what I did on the second carburetor, which just worked out a lot easier. Um, quick note, uh, while I was doing the other side of the carburetors, I noticed that when you're putting in the pilot screw, it's a lot easier to just put all the parts onto the screw itself first and snug that o-ring on and then the pieces won't fall off and it's a lot easier to get this in the hole and make sure everything lines up let it focus Hold on. there we go see I've got the spring on there, the washer and, and the o-ring and yeah see this is just easier, it stays on so I may open the other side just to check that I that they're all in there right but yeah, it's just a little helpful tip. Alright guys, we've got the pilot screw in and the this needle in. So that's two things done so far, so that's great. This is going we're like half done basically. Half done for this video so far. So now we'll be dealing with this smaller hole right here. And this is for the pilot jet. Uh, let me get the pilot jet from my pile of stuff. So this is what the pilot jet looks like. 
if I'm not wrong. It's got some little tiny holes in it and the top's also a flat head. It's also got a little hole in it. These parts are new so I'm not going to be dousing them in carb cleaner because they're already clean. If you're, if, you, if you're not installing new parts, if you're just cleaning out old ones, you would take all these bits and just drown them in carb cleaner, leave them for a while, uh, spray them out with compressed air if you have that, or uh, I don't know, just let them dry and then put them back and hopefully your bike would be running fine. But mine's missing all these pieces, that's why I'm putting in new everything. And these are hella hard to find. You know, I'm thinking maybe I should have just bought a new carburetor, but you know, this is learning. And this is kind of fun. So this, for the pilot screw, I mean pilot jet, yeah, pilot jet, we aren't going to be needing any springs or any washers for this one. It's supposed to just drop in and screw, so this is kind of scary, so it's just going to drop it in. And it just goes down there, I guess. And hopefully you have a screwdriver thin enough. Oh, just barely, just barely. You know what, I might have a thinner one. That will work better. And I found a thinner screwdriver and this is just going to spin. And I'm also not sure about how tight you're supposed to make these. I'm just getting them hand tight, you know, snug. And I'm just going to call it at that. So that's in there snug. Let me get you a look of what we have so far. So there it is in there. And here's the other one we put in. And you can't see the one we put here, but it's in there. You can kind of see from the side. Um, the purpose of all these things, I don't know. But they all need to be clean for this to work right. I, I'm pretty sure I know how this one works. This is like, this fills this tank or this bowl with gas. And once these floats um, hit the top, it like closes this valve needle. And that's how it stops the gas from overflowing in here, I guess. So. So, that's gonna be about it for today, for this video. Uh, we put in three new parts into this carburetor and well, this, is, this would be the last part that I need to replace in here. There's three pieces that go in here, and currently I only have one of them. So, uh, later I'll be posting another video about that. Uh, for this side, it's going to be, for the other side of the carburetor, it's going to be exactly the same as this one. So, whatever I did here, you're going to want to do here. And that's going to, that's going to, that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Come back for when you want to see part two and part three. And uh, yeah.